welcome to yet another episode where i am going to be taking you on a tour of a temple that is rich in heritage history and culture today we will be visiting the varadaraja swami temple of kanchipuram a shrine that is also known as attigiri this is one of the grandest temples possible with its soaring gopurams multiple pavilions plenty of art and architecture and it happens to be among the holiest of the holies as far as the vaishnavites go of the 108 divya desams this ranks among the top 3 and this is a classification that goes back to the time of the sangam era bharadam padiya perindevanar the great poet of the sangam period has this to say about this particular temple thenoongu neezhal thiruvengadam ennum வானோங்கு மலையும் சோலை என்றும் தானோங்கு திருவரங்கம் என்றும் அத்திகிரி என்றும் சொன்னார்க்கு உண்டோ துயர் இஸ் தேர் எனி சாரோ பாசிபிள் ஃபார் தோஸ் ஹூ ஹாவ் சாண்டட் த நேம்ஸ் ஆஃப் திருவேங்கடம் திருவரங்கம் அண்ட் அத்திகிரி இன் சன்ஸ்கிரிட் டூ வி ஹாவ் அ ஸ்தோத்ர விச் பிகின்ஸ் ஸ்ரீ ரங்க மண்டல நிதிம் கருணா நிவாசம் ஸ்ரீ வெங்கடாத்ரி சிகராலய காலமேகம் ஸ்ரீ ஹஸ்திசைல சிகரோஜ்வல பாரிஜாத்தம் ஸ்ரீஷம் நமாமி சிரசா யது சைல தீபம் இட் இஸ் தட் ஹஸ்திகிரி தட் இஸ் அத்திகிரி விச் இஸ் த வரதராஜ சுவாமி டெம்பிள் இன் காஞ்சிபுரம் த லார்ட் ஹியர் இஸ் நோன் எஸ் தேவ பெருமாள் வரதராஜா தேவராஜா செவரல் நேம்ஸ் திஸ் இஸ் தி உத்சவ மூர்த்தி அண்ட் த மூல மூர்த்தி இஸ் அ is more or less on the same lines as the utsava only it is much larger it's a beautiful granite idol of four arms with one hand in abhaya mudra the other hand holding a gada the two hands at the back holding the shankha and the chakra the two consorts are not in the sanctum the goddess is known as perindevi taya and that is the utsava murti of the goddess herself now what is the legend as far as this temple is concerned Much of the Vishnu temples of Kanchipuram share a common legend that of Brahma starting a sacrifice without his consort Saraswati and she is sending several challenges to prevent the culmination of the sacrifice Mahavishnu appearing in each one of those instances and quelling her schemes you take the temples around Kanchipuram and you will find that this story repeats itself If it is Ashtabhujakaram, Vishnu arrived with eight arms to quell Kali, who was sent by Saraswati to destroy the sacrifice. If it was Thiruvekka, he lay down in the form of a bridge to prevent the river Vegavati from flowing down and washing away the sacrifice. So there are several such instances. Atigiri marks the successful culmination of that sacrifice of Brahma. After the numerous challenges that Saraswati had placed in his way, and vishnu having quelled every one of them finally out of the sacrificial fire emerges a beautiful idol of vishnu which is this particular idol and it came with its own vimana which is known as the punya koti vimana and even today lord varadaraja is housed in a sanctum under what is called the punya koti vimana because he came out of a sacrificial fire it is believed that varadaraja perumal holds marks of the flame on his face and you can see them you can see that the face of the holy idol is completely pitted because this is one of the holiest spots for vaishnavites several saints and scholars have come here and adored the idol with their works in the form of prose poetry and other works of art let's take a look at the list it's a divya desam so automatically it means that some alvars have come here and composed poetry on the temple there is a belief that whenever the word kachi appears in a pasuram it stands for the varadaraja swami temple and therefore there is some amount of doubt as the as to the number of alvars who came to this particular temple and composed verses some say that only two alvars came buddha talwar and tirbanga alvar others say buddha talwar pe alvar tirbanga alvar and nam alvar too has included one particular line which denotes the varadaraja swami temple therefore we have got budha talwar we have got tirumangai alvar 
and then we have got Thirukkachi Nambi, who was one of the gurus of Sri Ramanujacharya. Thirukkachi Nambi, who composed the Vardaraja Ashtakam over here, is better remembered for a unique service that he rendered the Lord. Every day he would take a fan and go and keep the Lord cool by swinging it. This is known as the Alavatta Kainkaryam. And all around the Vardaraja Swami temple, you will find there are numerous carvings of Thirukkachi Nambi holding the fan aloft. Ramanuja Acharya, as I said, Sri Ramanuja was a disciple of Thirukkachi Nambi and he is very much a presence in this Vardaraja Swami temple. Kura Tarvar was one of the disciples of Sri Ramanuja and he too has composed hymns over here. A hundred years after Ramanuja comes Sri Vedanta Desika, the great scholar. Vedanta Desika has composed the Adaikala Patti, the Vardaraja Panchashat, which is 51 verses on Vardaraja Swami. But my favorite is his Hamsa Sandesham. Hamsa Sandesham is a message that Vedanta Desika imagines and interpolates into the Ramayana. After Anjaneya Swami comes back from Lanka carrying a message to Rama that Sita is safe in the Ashoka Vana. How does Rama communicate back to Sita that he has got the message? So Vedanta Deshika imagines Rama asking a swan to go to Lanka and inform Sita that he is in receipt of her message and that he will soon come. And like Kalidasa's Mega Sandesham, the Hamsa Sandesham describes the route that the swan has to take from Kishkinda all the way to Lanka. En route, Rama dedicates four or five verses to the beauties of Atigiri, the Vegavati river and the glories of the temple. And then we have got Dodacharya, who came in the 15th or the 16th century, I don't remember which, but who is known for his attachment to the temple. Given that there were so many Vaishnavite scholars and sages, it is therefore but natural that several kings came here and endowed this temple. Thirumangai Alvar talks about Pallava kings having come here and Built, uh, built chambers and pavilions inside this temple. We do know that Prataparudra of the Kakatiya Empire came here and endowed the shrine. There are still vestiges of Chola built constructions inside the shrine. But the biggest influence is that of the Vijayanagar Empire. The eastern Gopura, which you see over here, which is of nine tiers, was built by Krishna Devaraya. And look at the beautiful four pillared pavilions that dot this temple all around it. Like in all famous Vijayanagar temples, a Kalyana Mantapa was also built, replete with carvings of rearing horsemen, of Manmatha, of Rathi, of several deities, all of them in a state of suspended animation, beautifully endowed in granite. And do you see those rings hanging down from the top? Those are not bronze rings or iron rings. They are all carved out of one granite piece. It can fool you just looking at it from a distance. And then we have got several other instances. We've got, as I said, these beautiful four-pillared pavilions. We've got earlier temples stopped by Vijayanagar and Nayak Vimanas. Then we have got Gopuras as well. You've also got a beautiful tank, the Anantasaras. And you can see there is a small yellow canopy towards the far end of the Anantasaras. Beneath that is the wooden idol of Atigiri Varadhar. Last year, this idol was brought out and it caused a sensation with thousands and thousands coming to take a darshan of this particular idol, after which it was put back in the casket inside this water body. It is generally believed that the Atti Giri Varadhar was originally that wooden idol and for various reasons, probably because it had suffered damage, it was taken out, put into a cask and kept inside the tank with a granite replacement being put in the sanctum. And it became customary thereafter for the idol, the wooden idol in the tank to be removed and brought out once in so many years. And one such year was last year. If these beauties are not enough, all around the sanctum, the immediate sanctum where Vardaraja Swami is, you will find the walls covered with beautiful paintings of the Nayak period. These depict the various Vishnu idols in the 108 Divya Desams together with their consorts 
and in some cases even details of the vimana the tank the people who came and worshiped and several other things you must be wondering how there is a hill in kanjipuram where is this atti giri coming from the story goes that once brahma's sacrifice was over lord vishnu at brahma's request decided to stay back in kanjipuram to bless his devotees and airavata the elephant of indra came and formed the pedestal and therefore it looked like a mountain therefore it became hasti giri the elephant hill and on top of it vishnu is supposed to have stood in ancient times this part of kanjipuram was also known as atti ur this is because it was a grove of atti trees or udumbara trees in vishnu sahasranama we have nyagrodo dumbaro ashvatha chanurangra nishudana it mentions three trees nyagroda udumbara and ashvatha these are the three sacred trees to vishnu and this udumbara is nothing but the atti tree and therefore this was atti ur and the sanctum itself is built on a multi story concept there is a ground level there is a first level and on top of that is vishnu at the first level there is a sanctum for narasimha which is dated to the 11th century ad therefore we do know the age in which this sanctum that we today see was built the legend of gajendra is also associated with kanjipuram as the story is very well known it doesn't merit repetition but on hearing the cries of the elephant trapped by the crocodile vishnu immediately flew on his garuda came and released it and therefore he is also known as gajendra varada and therefore one of the greatest festivals in this particular temple is during the month of vaigasi which is what we are going through now and in vaigasi when the annual brahmotsavam of this temple happens on the third day lord vishnu comes out on a magnificent garuda mount early in the morning all the poems starting from the time of the arvars mention the garuda vahanam of this temple it is that significant and so we have mahavishnu coming out on garuda in procession on the third day during vaikasi visakha and what does buddha tarvar have to say atti uran pullai urvan pullai uran means one who is moving on a particular bird animani tutti sei nagatin mel tuilvan mutti marayavan maakadal nanjundanar maakadal nanjundandranarkum irayavan engal piran that lord who is the lord to shiva who swallowed the poison he is our lord this is how buddha tarva describes this particular deity when he comes out in procession and there is a close up view of the magnificent garuda with vishnu on top of him this particular utsavam was a favorite of doddacharya whom i mentioned to you earlier and doddacharya wrote five stanzas praising this particular event and as he grew old he couldn't come he was staying in sholinga and from there he found it impossible to travel to kanjipuram in order to witness the garudotsava one particular year when he became too old he just could not make it and he stayed back and that year when lord vishnu came out from the gopuram he asked his attendants to lower the umbrellas he said he will give darshan at this point of time to doddacharya who is in sholinga and therefore even today when vishnu comes out on garuda from this gopura you will find that for a moment the attendants hide the idol with their umbrella it is believed that at that time lord devaraja goes to sholingar and gives darshan to doddacharya the first stanza of doddacharya's vardaraja panchakam is translated over here pratyushe varadaha prasanna vadanaha प्राप्ताभि मुख्यान जनान आबद्ध मंजली मस्तकान अभिमलान आबालम आनंदयन मंदोड्डायित चामरैहि मणिमय श्वेतात पत्रैहि शनैहि अंतर्गोपुरम आविरास भगवान आरूढ पक्षीश्वरः इन द मॉर्निंग लॉर्ड वरदा विद अ स्माइलिंग फेस इज ग्रीटेड बाय हिज डिवोटीज विद देयर हैंड्स लिफ्टेड टू देयर हेड्स and gives joy to all the young and the old with the fly whisks moving gently and under two giant white umbrellas 
he arrives slowly at the western gopura mounted on the king of the birds can you beat that for sheer imagery so wonderful all the great composers you name them and they were here purandara dasa who came here during the height of the vijayanagar empire says kannara kande achutana kanchi koti punya kariraj varadana that varada who gave blessings to the elephant and who is in punya koti vimana and then we have got shahaji the maratha emperor who composes a composition in the raga ghantaravam a very rare raga in the midst of all these scholars and poets we have two very unusual devotees as well we've got either robert clive or his son edward clive all we know is lord varadaraja wears a gem bedecked jewel on his neck and that is known as the clive makarakanti legend has it that one of the two clives we don't know which came here and endowed the temple with this jewel in robert clive's life the varadaraja swami temple has played a very significant role in 1751 when he was battling the french the enemy had come and sheltered inside the temple and clive had to pull them out a cannon ball narrowly missed clive and hit his companion who was killed immediately clive was ultimately victorious and it is quite possible that that is the reason why he endowed this particular temple the other story is that clive was struck with fever and this is once again documented in his life in kanchipuram he took shelter in this temple and recovered from the fever that can also be a reason as to why he donated the jewel but the story also says that clive who was governor of madras came and gave this jewel to lord varadaraja robert was never a governor of madras it was his son Ed edward who was the governor so did edward clive and his wife come here and did they endo the temple we have no idea all we know is that there is a clive makarakanti similarly lion and place after whom place palayam is named also came here and gave jewels to this particular shrine this is one of four shrines in india where the carnatic trinity all three of them have composed songs you've got chama shastri with a varnam in ananda bhairavi tyagaraja with his varadaraja ninukori in swarabhushani and muthuswami dikshitar with his varadaraja avaba in ganga tarangini all three of them appear to have come here and composed this song which is why when i had to plan a heritage tour to varadaraja swami temple kanchipuram it became impossible as to which songs to include and which songs to leave out i'm sure after this presentation some of you are going to get back to me to say that i left this out or left that out and that there are more songs of dikshitar and tyagaraja dedicated to this temple etc and i agree but the point is that there is only so much that we could do and so we had singers ram ramakrishnan murthy coming along with us on that particular tour this photograph was taken when we were asked to sit in a particular pavilion in the temple so that he could sing the compositions and he sang much to the delight of the devotees the group that had come with us and the priests in the temple now it's over to ramakrishnan murthy singing dikshitar's varadaraja ababa in ganga tarangini which he has specially recorded for this particular presentation and i thank him for that <laughs>
composers in the post trinity period have kept the tradition going on even now and among them balaji pet venkatramana bhagavata who was one of tyagaraja's senior most disciples and was perhaps with tyagaraja when tyagaraja came here to this particular temple in 1837 he has composed a beautiful song kanulara kanti nevu kanchi varadu nene a beautiful composition in dhanyasti set to eight with eight stanzas and it describes the entire hustle and bustle of the garudotsava it even goes to the detail of mentioning the gangai kondan mandapam which venkatramana bhagavatar says as gangondra mandapam where he talks of perumal arriving and all the musicians standing together and performing bhajan it gives you a beautiful word picture of that particular festival and then we've had tiger varadacharya and his two brothers that is krishnamacharya and the other brother kv srinivas aengar of whom we do not have a photograph together the three of them composed five songs in all of which they included the mudra of tyagaraja it was their way of paying tribute to tyagaraja and today we even believe that those compositions were tyagarajas one among them is vinata suta vahana in harikam boji and that again describes the garuda vahanam garuda vahana utsavam of this particular temple and so we are done and we complete our tour here we are standing at the entrance of the gopuram after having taken darshan of the lord of goddess perindevi tayar of udayavar of vedanta desika of of buddha tarvar pe arvar tirumangai arvar all the great scholars we have also moved with the great composers purandara dasa tyagaraja muthuswami dikshitar balaji pet venkatramana bhagavatar doddacharya it's very difficult it's truly sometimes it's awe inspiring and stunning when you think about how much one temple can possess this presentation would not have been complete without so many people helping me with photographs and with other material dr vijay shri ram and sumitra vasudevan sumitra vasudevan who has probably been on every one of my tours without fail and who apart from taking photographs also sketches several of those locations so dr vijay shri ram and sumitra vasudevan my colleague in my office sridhar who has sent me the photographs of perumal and tayar and we've got some i have taken i've taken the liberty of taking them from the internet i have acknowledged those people over here i would also particularly like to thank uh vinod vinod ranganathan who has sent me photographs of perumal on garudotsavam and this contact of vinod was enabled by chitra ravindran who put the two of us together so that i could get those photographs truly it is the blessing of varadaraja that such a presentation is possible i have also used a number of books as reference which i am showing over here for you in case you want to further your research into this particular temple thank you very much and i hope to soon be with you with further legends further history further heritage be safe and have a good time